Okay, guys. So today we're going to be talking about how to integrate when we have ease in the function. Uh, the nice thing is this is a very simple rule. The integral of e to the u is just e to the u plus c. Most of the time, u is going to be the value in the exponent of e. However, sometimes u will need to be the denominator or the value under a radical. du needs to be nearly equivalent to a factor of the expression. When you're integrating, we have to be thinking ahead. If I let u equal this exponent, will the derivative be close to the rest of the problem? The reason it will be is because if I let u equal 3x plus 1, that derivative is just 3dx. And a constant is fine. It's always fine to have a constant because you can get rid of that constant so easily. If I want to just replace dx, I would have to do one-third to cancel those out. So wherever I have that dx right there in that circle, that's going to get replaced with one-third du. Looking at the rest of the problem, this is our e. What is happening to e? Well, it's getting raised to the u power. So this is what our problem turns into. To integrate e to the u, it's just going to be e to the u plus c. But we don't want to leave u in the problem, so we have to replace the u with 3x plus 1. Okay. So the only thing tough about this is making sure that your du is what you need it to be. Looking at this next one, like I said, most of the time, the u is going to be that exponent value. So we're going to let u equal negative x squared. Teresa, what's the derivative of negative x squared? Negative 2x dx. Now look at what we're trying to get, though. We're trying to get this factor of 5x dx. That's what we need to replace. So if I got a negative 2x dx and I want to get a 5x dx, I have to get rid of the negative 2 and I have to get the 5. So what's that, Brandon? All right. Multiply both sides by negative 5 halves. So now these would cancel, and I would get that 5x dx that I need. So this 5x dx that I have circled is just going to get replaced with negative 5 halves du. And now my problem just becomes e to the u. And we just said the integral of e to the u is e to the u. So I'm going to have negative 5 halves. This integral is e to the u, but I don't want to do the u. I'm just going to replace it with what the x value was for it. All right, on example three, if we have an exponent on the e, it's 90% sure that that's going to be what our u is equal to. We have an exponent on the e that's not just an x. So because of that not being just an x, that's probably what we want u to equal. <coughs> but if I say u equals 1 over x, that's pretty tough to take the derivative of. So how should we rewrite that? x to the negative 1. So now when we take the derivative, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, x to the negative 2. Now, that kind of looks like maybe that wasn't a good thing because we got x to the negative 2, and we're supposed to get x to the positive 2. That is x to the negative 2, isn't it? All right, so this is really e to the 1 over x and times x to the negative 2 dx, which is what we need. But we don't want the negative, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. If I multiply this side by negative 1, that goes away. Multiply that side by negative 1. So here's my x to the negative 2 dx. That's going to get replaced with negative du. 
Here's my e. It's to the u power. And now this is the simplest one we've done because the integral of e to the u is just e to the u. So it's negative e to the u, but looking back at what u was equal to, plus c. Questions so far? All right, let's go to the back, just three more. These are gonna get a little bit tougher. All right, so on example four, remember what I said, 90% of the time, u is gonna equal the exponent. But that's only if the exponent is something other than x. In this case, our exponent is just x. It does not make sense to let u equal x, ever. <coughs> Never, ever will you let u equal x. Does anyone have an idea of what we could let u equal? One plus You're correct. If we let u equal 1 plus e to the x, that derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x dx. So look at why that was a good choice. Here's e to the x dx. So that's going to just be du. What does this part turn into now? One over u, just one over u, guys, because anytime we get rid of this numerator, there's still a one there. One plus e to the x is what our u is. Now, we don't want to go back to x's at all. <coughs> this is x equals zero and x equals one. We want these to be u values, so I have to plug these in for x. So if I plug in 0 for x, what is e to the 0? 1 plus 1, so this is now 2 here. Now I'm going to plug in my top number of 1. e to the first is e plus 1. That's just 1 plus e. There's nothing I can do with that. But now I have everything written in terms of u instead of in terms of x. So I just have to think, what's the integral of 1 over u? you got to think back. We did this a while back. Anybody remember the integral of 1 over u? Natural log. Good. So this integral then is going to be the natural log of u. We have to plug in 1 plus e and 2. We plug in the top number first. So it's the natural log of 1 plus e minus the natural log of 2. Remember that integration is finding the area under the curve, bounded by the curve, and the x-axis, and the x-values that are given. All right. What about example five? Should I let u equal x? No, I just said you're never going to let u equal x. So what's another option to let u equal? e to the x plus 1, right? No. Not to the th not to the one third. Because if we do it to the one third, guys, listen, if we do it to the one third, when we take that derivative, it's going to be a big mess and it's too much. All we want to replace is e to the x. So what is the derivative of e to the x? e to the x dx. So right here we have e to the x dx. What does that get replaced with? du, that's just du. Now here's our e to the x plus 1, and that's now u. What's happening to u? We're taking the cube root, but what power could I write it to? 1 third. So now to integrate this, if I have u to the 1 third, that's just our simple power rule where we're going to add 1, and we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. A lot of you on our last quiz with the u substitutions, you would just leave that answer right there. Incorrect. All right. <laughs> 
The reason it's incorrect is because we don't want to have U's in our final answer because we started with X's. So we're going to have to do this. That would be the final answer. All right, example six. Again, we're thinking u can be x, u could be e to the x squared over 2, or you could just be x squared over 2. What's going to be the best thing? What did I say we're going to let it equal if the exponent? So we're going to let u equal 1 half x squared. 1 half x squared is the same thing as x squared over 2. So now I'm going to take that derivative. 1 half times 2 is 1x dx. That's perfect because that's what I've got here is an x dx. So that x dx gets replaced with du. This is now just going to be e to the u. These are x's, but I want to make them u's, so I have to plug it in. 0 squared is 0, half of 0 is 0, that's still going to stay 0. Plug in radical 3, radical 3 squared is 3, half of 3 is just 3 halves. So I have now changed these into u's on this definite integral. So the integral of e to the u is just going to be e to the u, I then just have to plug in 3 halves and 0, so it's e to the 3 halves minus e to the 0, which is just 1. Let me remind you of something. You can go to your y equals. I can put in x e to the x squared over 2. All right, so I'm plugging in my function. I'm going to do a zoom 6. That's not correct. Just ignore that. Incorrect. Okay, go now to second trace calculate, and we want to find the integral. So down here to number 7. And we're going to go from 0, enter, to radical 3, enter. <laughs> and so this is the approximate answer. Guys, even if you give me the approximate answer, I will still probably just take off one point if it's worth 3 or 4. Because at least you understand what that's finding. But watch how I can check. My approximate answer here is 3.48. So I go back to my home screen, and I'm going to see if e to the 3 halves minus 1, it, it should be equivalent to that, 3.48, and it is. So I can check my answers. Some of you turn your quizzes in really early and you haven't checked any of these definite integrals. You should always check those because they're so easy and quick to check. You shouldn't miss those. All right, any questions? So the only thing we have to remember is the derivative of e to the um, u is e to the u times u prime. The integral of e to the u is e to the u. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. The integral of 1 over x is going to be natural log of x. You need to know those things. That's what this is all about on this section.